Welcome everybody. Today is going to be a great lecture. Why? Because we're talking about triglycerides. We're talking about fats. We're going to be talking about cholesterol. Now, what a better, more fitting time than talking about this after eating CC's. I just had lunch at CC's Pizza, and I had my favorite food, the macaroni and cheese pizza. Now, needless to say, that has a lot of triglycerides. It has a lot of cholesterol. So what I'll be talking about is what's happening inside me right now. What more exciting than pulling together stuff that's actually happening in my body right now and talking about it. All right, so today's going to be a good day. I did give you a little warning here. Hold on. This is going to be one of the harder concepts in biochemistry. Now, I also need to, I guess, forewarn, forewarn people. No, I am not a biochemistry PhD. Not PhD. That is important. I have not dedicated my whole life to this. However, I've gone through this material multiple times in medical school. I also covered it multiple times in undergrad. None of it made sense to me. So I decided to synthesize this on my own. Um, this is kind of my rendition and my breakdown of this topic. You know, uh, it's it's been taught to me in so many different ways, but it really never kind of stuck until I had to piece it together on my own. So my goal here is to try and make it so you guys can understand it how I understand it. Maybe it does work for you, maybe it doesn't. Um, but I'm gonna provide the basics. Um, I am not a PhD. I'm not going to go too deep into everything. But what I am going to do is I'm going to talk about the apolipo proteins. I'm going to talk about the lipoproteins. Lipoproteins. I'm going to talk about the pathway. You've all probably seen a rendition of this pathway at some point before. We're going to talk about it. Um, there's a lot to it, and there's a lot of different enzymes and stuff that kind of happens um, we're gonna keep the basics now don't be sending me messages that says oh well what about this what about this no we're gonna cover the basics the basics of everything and then lastly we'll talk about the dyslipidemias the familial uh, dyslipidemias so the there will be a classification system that we can talk about and there's five different disorders and by the end of this you will be experts You'll be an expert on the basics, and that makes you an expert because most people don't know the basics even. Okay, so fasten your seatbelt. We're going to enter in the shallow end. We're going to enter in the swimming pool. We're going to ease into it right now. We're in the shallow end. You can stand on the ground, hopefully, because you've already covered this material. Uh, I'm going to assume you've covered this a little bit. So there's different types of lipoproteins. There's going to be Chylomicrons, there's going to be VLDLs, there's going to be LDLs, there's going to be IDLs, and there's going to be HDLs. Okay, what does all of this mean? I'm going to keep this to the basics. Remember that. Maybe you've been taught something that's a little more complex. This is a great video to have a backbone so you understand what the professor is actually saying. So let's talk about chylomicrons. We're gonna go, I'm gonna change my, my pen here. We're gonna go from enterocytes, so cells of the small intestine. Right now, I have a lot of fat in my small intestine. Those enterocytes will take up the fat from the lumen and then it'll package it into chylomicrons. So chylomicrons will go from small intestine from the enterocytes to tissues. Now what tissues am I talking about? I'm talking about adipose tissues. Any cell that, cont that contains LPL, lipoprotein lipase, and we'll cover that. Don't worry, don't. I just said a hard word, LPL, lipoprotein lipase. Don't freak out. LPL is going to take these chylomicrons, which are going to be high in triglycerides, so fat, so fatty acids are going to be high in triglycerides. Remember, triglyceride is just a glycerol with some three fatty chains to it. That's a triglyceride. Doesn't look pretty. Okay, it's going to take a triglyceride-rich chylomicron, and this LPL, once it hits the target tissue, it's going to take a chylo, it's going to do a reaction, and you'll get remnants. 
remnants are left over. So a chylomicron via goes to the tissue. It's going to release a whole bunch of triglycerides in the form of fatty acids. Those fatty acids will go to the cells like an adipose tissue. Adipose tissues are made of fat. So it makes sense that these fatty acids are getting deposited into the adipose tissue cells. So those will express LPL. This LPL enzyme is going to be found on the uh, vasculature wall, the endothelial wall. These chylomicrons get conver converted into remnants, so they're going to have less triglycerides in that form. Those remnants will go to the liver. We're going to do a nice pathway, which will lay all of this out into a big picture. But just realize that chylomicrons, chylomicrons are going to go from enterocytes, from the small intestine, to tissues, and then ultimately to the liver. They're going to deposit some triglycerides into the tissues and then go to the liver. That's it. That's easy. Now we start, we start wading into the, into the water. We're still in the shallow end, but we're going to wade a little bit deeper. We can still touch those, so keep that in mind. This is all doable. You guys are awesome. Keep that in mind. Okay, so we're going to be talking about very low density lipoproteins, VLDLs. Simply put, they're going to go from liver to tissues. Now, that's as basic as you can get. They're going to go from the liver. They're going to get converted. They're first going to get converted into IDLs. And then from IDLs, those will get converted into LDLs. So the progression is VLDL to IDL to LDL. That's your conversion. So we've got the liver here. Liver spits out some VLDLs, undergoes a reaction. Now you have IDLs, undergoes a reaction. Now you get LDLs into tissues. Okay, so we're kind of building a little bit of a picture. Up here, chylomicrons go from enterocytes to tissues. Now VLDLs go from the liver to the tissues. So we have a different origin here. So VLDLs are going to be very rich in uh, triglycerides. Enterocytes release chylomicrons, which are going to be very high in triglycerides. VLDLs are going to be high in triglycerides. They're kind of the same thing, kind of. They're from different cells, but they're high in triglycerides. Now, VLDLs will also have a lot of cholesterol. Um, the chylomicrons may have a little bit of cholesterol as well. So the remnants will have a higher concentration of cholesterol because you get rid of all these triglycerides. It'll increase the cholesterol triglyceride ratio. But we're still talking about VLDLs. They'll be high in triglycerides. What we're going to do is we're going to spit out some VLDLs from the liver, high in triglycerides. We're going to use that lipoprotein lipase to cleave off some of these triglycerides from this VLDL molecule. And then our net result is an IDL, an intermediate density lipoprotein. So we have the very low density, now we have the uh, IDLs. IDLs are going to be from VLDL breakdown. Okay, so we've already covered that. That shouldn't blow your mind. And what they're going to do is they're going to turn into LDLs. Well, that kind of follows our little pattern down here. So everything should kind of be making sense. What IDLs do is it gives, it gives the system a break. Here we go from the liver to VLDL to IDL to LDL to tissues. It pretty much acts as the little rest, rest stop. From here, we can convert these IDLs back to the liver. So it gives the system a chance to return stuff back to the liver. Now, what is it going to return? It's going to return the triglycerides that didn't get cleaved off of this VLDL molecule, because typically this is full of triglycerides. All those triglycerides get kind of cleaved off, go to the target cells, and now we have an IDL. So whatever triglycerides didn't get cleaved off get returned back. Then also we can have some cholesterol. Because this VLDL is going to be full of triglycerides, but it also have some cholesterol. So keep that in mind. 
This VLDL is a molecule that is tons and tons of triglycerides. It also has a little bit of cholesterol. So as we remove those triglycerides, cholesterol is starting to be more prominent. There's, there's a bigger cholesterol to triglyceride ratio. So if you get rid of a lot of triglycerides, that cholesterol is starting to, you know, have room, it's starting to make its presence known. So this IDL is an intermediate step. It allows the system to return those triglycerides and cholesterol from this VD VLDL molecule back to the liver. However, it can also get converted to LDL. So that, that's an important concept is remember this progression right here. These five things, if you know these five things, you know a good amount of information. Okay, so we just converted IDLs to LDLs. So now let's talk about LDLs. LDLs are going to pretty much move cholesterol to the tissue. We're, it, that's, that's it. Since we're cleaving off a lot of triglycerides here, so we have a ton of triglycerides, now we have not as many triglycerides, we get rid of a few more, now we're pretty much just cholesterol. So the LDLs are very high in cholesterol. That is a big, big, big point. I would remember that. That's a top tenner. That is a top ten thing to know from this lecture. Why is that? Because if you have increased LDLs, it means you'll have increased cholesterol to your tissues. Because remember, LDLs deliver cholesterol to the tissues. So if you have a lot of LDLs, your tissues will have a lot of cholesterol that is not good. So who's the saving grace? Who's going to save us from all this cholesterol in the tissues? It's going to be the good guy HDL. The LDL is going to be the bad guy, the villain of this story. HDL is going to be the hero. This is going to be the unsung hero. Now, uh, HDLs are going to take cholesterol from tissue to the liver. So in our little diagram here, we're going to take tissue cholesterol and we're going to dump it back to the liver. So HDLs, cholesterol. Okay, so we're starting to build a little bit of a picture here. I'm going to dedicate uh, a couple slides from now directly to this pathway. It's going to be a beautiful picture. It's going to synthesize all this information. But let's go over here because this is, this is a good thing to know, this slide. Chylomicrons are from the intestinal cells, and they deliver triglycerides to tissues. Everything that's in that's left over are going to be chylomicron remnants. Those chylomicron remnants are going to have increased cholesterol in them. Okay, VLDLs are going to be primarily triglycerides as well. You're going to cleave off a lot of those triglycerides. You get an IDL. That IDL is going to have some cholesterol. It's going to have some triglycerides still that IDL gets converted into an LDL. That LDL is going to be pretty much just cholesterol because you're getting rid of triglycerides, so it'll pretty much just be cholesterol. And that gets delivered to the tissues. Once out of tissue, it gets endocytosed. It gets eaten up by the cell and delivers its cholesterol to the cell. And you need cholesterol for cell membranes, but too much is bad. So if you have too much cholesterol in your cells, you're going to use HDL. You're going to use HDLs, your good guys, your heroes of the whole story to deliver cholesterol from the tissues back to the liver. Once in the liver, cholesterol can get converted into the bile acids and you, your bile acids are going to have a ton of cholesterol content. Most of it gets reabsorbed back into the system. However, uh, there are drugs out there that you can get rid of the cholesterol that's in your bile acids. So that, that's a little correlation that we can tie in. We kind of beat that one to death, huh? Uh, this will be a long video I've already kind of come to the conclusion of. And uh, as such, I'm going to turn off my phone so there's no distractions. All right, let's talk about the fun subject of apolipoproteins. Apolipoproteins, there's going to be five classes that we're mainly concerned about. A, B, there's a couple Bs, C, and E. Now, I'm going to do this. This is, this is kind of a, a lot of memorization. That's, that's uh, you know, sadly, that's kind of one of the, the conclusions that I can draw. 
uh, a lot of memorization on this slide. So you probably just got done with the last one, your brain's hurting a little bit. Now uh, we're crossing the little barrier in the swimming pool where the, the deep end starts, you know, kind of the downward slope. So we're starting that downward slope in the swimming pool. This is, this is a lot of memorization, but I'll try and break it down. So, um, so let's just dive in. Okay, apolipoprotein, what is the function? So apolipoproteins are just gonna be markers. They're gonna be markers on the surface of the cell and they're gonna do different functions. Now, apolipoprotein A, it's gonna be a cofactor for LCAT. No, not the entrance exam that you take for law school. Uh, not the LCAT, but LCAT. This is the medical version, better anyway. So apolipoprotein A. So these molecules over here, these lipoproteins, if they express apolipoprotein A, it means they have a cofactor for LCAT enzyme. And I'll explain what that means. But right now, this is the memorization part. This is, this is the part that no student actually likes. They're found on chylomicrons and HDL molecules. Um, the big one is going to be HDL molecules. If you, if you wanted to remember one thing on this slide, well, you'd be in trouble. But if you wanted to remember one thing about A, remember HDL. Now, B48, apolipoprotein B48, is going to be pretty easy. It's going to be found on chylomicron remnants. So it's going to be found on chylomicron remnants. What does it do? It's going to its function is going to be returning the chylomicron remnant to the liver. Remember, I said in the previous slide the chylomicrons contain triglycerides. Once you get rid of all those triglycerides, you get chylomicron remnants. Those chylomicron remnants have more cholesterol than triglyceride, and you're going to return that to the liver. Okay, now you've got. Uh, apolipoprotein B100. B100 is going to be expressed on VLDLs, IDLs, and LDLs. That's it. And what it's going to do is it has a very important function. It's going to bind the LDL receptor. It's going to bind the LDL receptor. Now, um, what can I say about this? That's about it. Um, there is a disease that we're going to talk about at the very, very end, um, but really that's as far as I want to go right now. Apolipo apolipoprotein C is going to be found on chylomicrons. It's going to be found on VL, DL, and HDL. Okay. What this is going to be, the function of this is going to be used for L, oops, that wasn't an L, LPL binding. Now, LPL, we've already briefly talked about it. LPL, remember, it's going to take triglycerides. The LPL is pretty much just going to cleave off triglycerides. It likes, oops, cleave triglycerides. Um, it doesn't really do much with the cholesterol. The cholesterol containing uh, lipoproteins, remember LDL was very high in, in cholesterol. So when you have an LDL molecule, what will happen is cells will endocytose it. It'll just eat that whole lipoprotein and take all of the cholesterol with it. However, LPL, lipoprotein lipase, is kind of going to just cleave off some triglycerides from, from that molecule. Okay, and lastly, we've got uh, apolipoprotein E. This is going to be mediating reuptake by liver. So you've got all of, I'm going to go back again, stay with me. You've got all of these molecules. You've got some VLDLs, IDLs, uh, and then not the LDLs, but um, you've got these molecules. You've also got some chylomicrons. It's going to return stuff to the liver. So it's going to be reuptake by the liver. So if you want it to be uptaken back by the liver, you need to express apolipoprotein E. So it's going to be all 
except LDL. That's an important, easy way to remember. Everything pretty much has apolipoprotein E except for LDL. So now over here, I drew some little uh, lipoprotein molecules. Um, and I think I'm just going to write E A C. Uh, it, just meaning it expresses apolipoprotein E, A, and C. Now, um, LDLs, on the other hand, pretty much just express B100. So that should kind of correlate over here. They don't, everything except for LDL expresses E, but here it's pretty much just going to be our LDL that's the uh, B100. Okay? This is standing for chylomicrons, C-H-Y, chylomicrons, uh, if you didn't get that. It'll express apolipoprotein E, A, C, and B48 uh, for the chylomicron remnants. Now we've got VLDLs, B100, that should be 100, E, A, and C. And then lastly, we've got uh, IDLs, LB, B100 as well, and E. So, you know, two different ways to express this. Um, you can either list it out and say what they're in or draw a little molecule and like show what's tagged on it. However, this is that stage, you know, I warned you, I'm sorry, I didn't invent this stuff. Please don't get mad at me. You just have to know it. You just have to memorize this stuff. Um, if you know what the function of each of these apolipoproteins are, then it makes a little more sense. Um, however, just memorize this stuff in general. Okay, that was not fun, and I'm aware of that. That was not fun. So this is a little more fun. There's there's a little more interaction. You can kind of follow where I'm going. Uh, you know, it's not that bad. I don't think it's that bad. We're going to start out with the intestine. So the small intestine. What's going to happen is we're going to take some fats. We're going to take some CC's pizza. I don't know if it's a copyright violation, but I'm going to say we're going to take some CC's pizza. We just ate it. Now we're in my intestine right now. You get to go through my intestine. Not many people can say that they've gone through my intestine, but you, on the other hand, are one of the lucky few. Okay, so we've got fats that go into our intestine. Those enterocytes will uptake those fats and the cholesterol, and it'll package it into chylomicrons. Remember, chylomicrons are high in triglycerides. They've also got some cholesterol, though. And we're going to deliver that to some tissues. So here's our tissues. Remember, this could be anything. This could be adipose tissue. This could be anything that expresses the uh, LPL, the lipoprotein lipase. So we're going to dump off some triglycerides. So there's our triglycerides leaving. Now we have chylomicron remnants. Okay, so we have the leftovers. Those will be higher in cholesterol. But where do these chylomicron remnants go? They go to the liver. The liver is an important organ. It doesn't get the credit that it deserves. It deals with so much. And one of those functions is it's going to take up those chylomicron remnants. So now, what, what are we going to bind? It's going to be through that B48. Remember I said chylomicron remnants have B48? That B48 is going to allow the chylomicron remnant to interact with the liver, and the liver can then uptake that chylomicron remnant. So that's an important kind of uh, concept. However, I'm going to leave it off because this is going to be confusing enough. You already know that chylomicron remnants have B48. I've just told you that. B48, B48, chylomicrons, B48. Now you will not forget. So we've also got... Uh, peripheral tissues here, so adipose cells, I mean, whatever tissue you want to say. Remember I said our hero of the story is going to be HDLs. HDLs! Look at the way the arrow is going. We're going to go from the tissues to the liver, and from that liver we can go through bile salts to excretion. That's the order. We can take cholesterol. Remember HDLs pretty much grab the cholesterol from tissues? They take cholesterol from the tissues, deliver it to the liver, and from the liver they can go through bile salts and eventually be excreted. Excellent. Okay, so our liver now has all these chylomicron remnant just stuff. 
We've also got some fats that it's picked up. And what it's going to do is it's going to spit out a VLDL, very low density lipoprotein. Remember I said this was high in triglycerides, but it also had some cholesterol to it. And what we're going to do is we're going to send this to the tissue. We've got more tissue. Um, I'm just kind of separating it out on sides here. No real organization to how I'm doing this. I'm just spacing it out. So we've got these VLDLs. VLDLs are going to dump off some of its triglycerides. I mean, this should technically be to the tissues. So it's going to dump off some of its triglycerides to the tissues, and now it'll spit out an IDL. So taking that same concept, the flow chart, the liver to VLDL to now IDLs, and then IDL has an opportunity to go back to the liver. Remember, the, it, the IDL is kind of like the rest stop. So if you're driving along the interstate and you see a rest stop, it's a chance for the liver and this whole system to kind of regroup. The IDL can go back to the liver. So, uh, or it can take another direction. It can, it can get converted to LDLs. It has one of two options. It can either go back to the liver or it can go to the LDL form. Now, once it's in the LDL form, what we'll be doing is we'll be cleaving off, or I guess conversion of IDL to LDL, we're going to cleave off some triglycerides. These triglycerides will go to the tissue. So we're just removing triglycerides from this, this molecule, and as we do, it changes its name, and as it's changing its name to LDL, we're cleaving off even more triglycerides, and this is the LDL molecule. This is going to be mostly cholesterol. So this LDL molecule gets uh, detected by the tissues. Endocytosis is how this LDL molecule gets uptaken into tissues. The cell is just going to eat this LDL molecule and everything that's in it, which is mostly cholesterol. Okay, is this making a little sense? Hopefully it is. Now, this IDL gets converted by hepatic lipase, um, and I will cover that in the next slide, hopefully. Uh, just hepatic lipase. Hepatic lipase is going to allow the liver to eat up this IDL molecule. I'll talk about it. I just wanted you to be aware of this is kind of where I'm talking about. So now, let's talk about it. Written out. We're going to write out some of the uh, some of these functions. You've maybe heard LPL. I've already mentioned it plenty of times. You may have heard LCAT. You may have heard hepatic lipase. You may have heard CETP. LPL. Lipo protein lipase lipoprotein lipase and this is going to be an enzyme it's going to be found on the endothelial level of or the endothelial layer of tissue so in the blood vessels still so as these triglycerides as these lipoproteins as these chylomicrons are traveling through your blood they're going to encounter this LPL this enzyme on the endothelial layer what's going to happen is it's going to cleave off some, some uh, triglycerides from whatever it's touching. So it's going to steal some triglycerides and hopefully change that molecule into something else. That's all the LPL is. It's going to be found on a lot of, uh, a lot of tissues, especially those adipose tissues. That's kind of like the hallmark tissue in my mind. Um, it's going to be found on adipose tissue. What we're going to be doing, this is required to convert the uh, VLDL to the IDL or the chylomicron to the chylomicron remnants. The LPL is required for that. LCAT, what does it stand for? That stands for lecithin cholesterol acetyltransferase. Not important. That is not what you want to dedicate to your mind. What you do want to convert to your mind is what it does. And what we'll, I'll talk about that in just a second because CETP and LCAT go together. Um, I probably should have lumped them together, uh, but we're going to knock off hepatic lipase and then we're going to get to this kind of semi-confusing topic about LCAT and CETP. We're going to dive into the deep end is pretty much what we're going to do. Um, that last pathway was pretty deep. 
we're still in the deep end. Hopefully we'll float. So we've got this hepatic lipase. You're going to see is this hepatic lipase is going to be on the liver cells. It's going to be on the hepatocytes. So it's going to be on on hepatocytes. And what it's going to do is it's going to take triglycerides from the IDL molecule. Remember the IDL goes back to the liver or to LDL. And what it's going to do is it's going to convert some of these IDLs to LDLs. And in the process, it's going to cleave off some triglycerides. And it allows the liver to do some of the work. Tissues don't have to do all the work. That's going to be hepatic lipase. It's going to steal some triglycerides from the IDL molecule. And in such, uh, you're going to create the LDL molecule. You can also reuptake this IDL molecule as well. but. Uh, this is good enough. Now let's talk about CETP and LCAT. Now I'm going to I'm going to bring back our good guy hero, HDL. So we've got our hero. I like seeing our hero. What we're going to be doing is you have this. We're going to start up here. We'll change to red. We've been sticking to one color. You've got this HDL molecule, and it's got this outer layer. And it's going to be its membrane. Now, using the concept of cholesterol esters, you can go from cholesterol and convert it to a form of cholesterol esters. Now, cholesterol esters, in my mind, are kind of like a storage. If you've got a storage, it's like a piggy bank. Now, uh, your bank account, you don't want all of your money in your checking account, hopefully. You want to put some in your savings account. Cholesterol esters are kind of like your savings account. So what you're going to do is you're going to have cholesterol from tissues, because remember HDLs pick up cholesterol from tissues, and you're going to deposit that cholesterol on this outer membrane of this HDL molecule. You're going to need an enzyme to convert cholesterol into cholesterol esters. CE is going to stand for cholesterol esters. You're going to have a lot of cholesterol esters inside your savings account. How do you convert this cholesterol to cholesterol ester? It's going to be through your LCAT, your LCAT enzyme. This is going to convert the cholesterol to the cholesterol esters. Now why is that important? Because once we take this cholesterol that's on the outside and we convert it to a cholesterol ester, it goes to the inside of this HDL molecule and now our membrane is ready to accept even more cholesterol. So you can take so you take a cholesterol, put it on the membrane, that gets converted to a cholesterol ester. That membrane is now clear of all cholesterol and it can accept more cholesterol. So you're taking a, a, a very uh, cholesterol molecule and converting it into a cholesterol ester. So you're concentrating it and in the meantime you're allowing that membrane to open up and have more. Okay. So now we've got another enzyme called the CETP. The CETP is simply going to take this stored form of cholesterol esters. So we've got this HDL molecule right now. This is an HDL molecule. And what this HDL molecule can do through the CETP uh, enzyme is we're going to move these cholesterol esters to LDL molecules. We can move it to VLDL molecules. Um, it's pretty much moving cholesterol esters to these, these tissues, these LDL and the HDL molecules. That's as deep as I want to go on that. Um, not the highest yield stuff. However, now, okay, this is, this is where you kind of shake your head at me. This is a little difficult. Familial dyslipidemias. So we're going to use a system called Friedrichsen's classification. Friedrichsen's classification, and as such, there will be five disorders. That's it. We have five disorders. Now, they're kind of tough, and they all kind of sound the same, and they've got long names, but there's only five. So we're going to go through them. We're going to start with uh, Friedrichsen's class 1 dyslipidemia. Now, it's also known as familial. Oh, jumped ahead of myself. Hyper Hyper 
hyper, familial hyperchylomicronemia. That is a mouthful. So what it is? What is it? It can be caused by a couple different things, and I'm going to change colors because this will help. It can be caused by a LPL, not an LDL, an LPL, a lipoprotein lipase deficiency. Remember, LPL was required to take that chylomicron to cleave off. This enzyme cleaves off triglycerides, so converting the chylomicron to a remnant, you're going to cleave off some triglycerides using this. Same with the VLDL. You're going to take some chylomicrons off that VLDL, cleave off some triglycerides, and then get the IDL. So you'll have an LPL deficiency or an apolipoprotein, so APO for short. APOC problem. Now the APOC, if you can remember, was needed for LPL binding. So if stuff can't bind to LPL, which is required for apolipoprotein C, you're not going to be able to cleave off those triglycerides if you can't bind to this LPL. So the APOC uh, defect or deficiency can also cause this. Now, uh, so what laboratory values are you going to see? You're going to see an increase in chylomicrons, you're going to see an increase in VLDLs. That's exactly what I was just talking about, because if you can't cleave off the triglycerides, you're going to see an increased number of these molecules. These can't get converted to their, uh, to their next form, per se. Uh, what are you going to see in this patient? Well, you're going to see decreased LDL, because these VLDLs can't turn into the next thing. They can't turn into IDLs, which get converted into LDLs. You're also going to see decreased HDLs. And then also, you can see pancreatitis. That's just a buzzword that you'll be seeing in association with familial hyperchylomicronemias, pancreatitis. Okay, now there's 2A. So there's going to be two class 2s. This is going to be subtype A. So Familial hypercholesterolemia. This is bad. You don't want this one. Uh, sadly, it's going to be common, but it's not good. Why is that? Well, oh, let's change colors. It's going to be due to LDL receptor defects. If you have an LDL receptor defect, I guess on hepatocytes to be technical, on hepatocytes, you know that you'll have high H or LDL levels, and you're going to deliver all of that cholesterol. LDL contains a lot of cholesterol. You're going to deliver all that to tissues. You're going to deliver a lot of cholesterol to tissues. Okay, so you're going to have, let's change color again. You're going to have increased LDL levels. That's not good. Why? It's because it's going to produce, uh, it's going to produce, uh, Oh, atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. You may see xanthomas. Xanthomas are going to be just accumulations of cholesterol. You may see it on the tendons, uh, on the skin, common on the face. So you're going to see a lot of cholesterol-related problems due to your increased LDL. Now. Familial, meaning it's some sort of inherited defect. All of these are some sort of inherited defect. Um, I should warn you, a big test question. Test questions love this. Um, what type of uh, inheritance is familial hypercholesterolemia? Um, an easy way to remember that is to A is autosomal dominant. So it's going to be autosomal dominant. Um, it's, it's not good. Okay, so now let's move on to class 2B. This is going to be familial. Seeing a little pattern here, familial. Combined. Hypercholesterolemia. I'm going to run out of space if I write it all out. Familial combined hypercholesterolemia. Now, what defect are we going to see? Well, we're going to see increased... ApoB100, 
and decreased LDL receptor. So same here, we have an LDL receptor defect on the hepatocyte, we have a problem with that, same thing. But now we've also got an increased expression of uh, apolipoprotein B100. Now what does that do? It's gonna bind the LDL receptor. So if you have an increased uh, ApoB100 and a decreased receptor, this is bad. This is even worse than type 2A. Uh, let's change color here. What are we gonna see? We're gonna see this increased LDL. Same thing. Plus, now we're gonna have an increased VLDL. These two together, these two class two um, familial hyperdyslipidemias are gonna be at an increased risk of I don't know what just happened, increased risk of coronary disease. Increased risk of coronary disease. It's not good. LDL is not your friend. Those are the, the enemy, remember? So you're gonna have increased cholesterol, you'll have an increased risk of coronary disease. So for class 2A and 2B. Now you're moving on to class 3. Um, sorry, you know, these count as 1. So class 2s only count as 1. These are an important one though. So now we're on to class 3. Familial dis-beta lipoprotein lipoprotein Anemia. Dis beta lipoproteinemia. I know that it's not what that spells, but that's what it means. Familial dis beta lipoproteinemia. Okay, and what this is going to be is continuing with our colors, it's going to be an APO E defect. An APO E defect. Now let's let's try and tie in what APO protein E does. It's going to be a uh, mediated by reuptake by the liver. So remember everything except for LDL expressed apolipoprotein E. So you're gonna have increased VLDL. You're gonna have increased IDL. Increased uh, chylomicrons. Now, um, HDLs are gonna be un unaffected really. Um, so they'll be about normal. We're really kind of dealing with the VLDLs, the IDLs. Okay, now you've got classification four. This one's gonna be familial hyperlipidemia. Familial hyperlipidemia. Now, what's wrong in this class four is gonna be an increase in VLDL production. Your liver is gonna produce an excessive amount of VLDL. Now, that's not good. So it's gonna result, of course, easily in a VLDL increase. Now, what are we gonna see? We're gonna see uh, elevated chylomicrons. elevated chylomicrons in the blood, and kind of like up here when you have elevated chylomicrons in your blood, you're gonna get pancreatitis. So when you see elevated chylomicrons, be thinking pancreatitis. They share the same kind of pathology. Lastly, we're gonna bring home the lecture with five. Not very common, uh, so really, I would remember the second one. That is gonna be your money maker. Class one is also important. Class three and four, you'll see on tests as well. Class five, uh, I personally have never seen a test question on it, but it is there. So I want to cover it. Triglyceridemia. So endogenous hypertriglyceridemia. Here you had, um, here you have the same thing as type four. So find a color. You're gonna have increased VLDL production. Same thing, same thing as class four. Except however for class five, you're also gonna have decreased 
lipoprotein lipase activity. So what that'll happen is it will result in an increase in VLDL, exact same as here, but we're also now gonna have an increase in chylomicrons. That's it, that's all, that's all I'm gonna talk about here. So we've covered class one, two, three, four, and five. Class 2A and 2B are gonna be your big ones. You should remember these. Um, they are autosomal dominant. They're gonna increase your risk of coronary disease. Why is that? Because you have an increase in LDL. When you have an increase in LDL, you're gonna have a problem. Now, um, let's see, what else should I talk about? Increasing chylomicrons, pancreatitis. Think of that connection. You know, I'm gonna go back here to our pathway because this is, this is the heart of the lecture. We're gonna take fats, go to the intestine, convert them to chylomicrons, which will be high in triglycerides. We'll cleave off those triglycerides, deliver it to some tissues. Those chylomicron remnants get back, delivered back to the liver. Now, once in the liver, we're gonna spit out a VLDL molecule. It'll be kind of like a chylomicron. It'll be high in triglycerides. Cleave off some triglycerides, now it'll be a little lower in triglycerides. We're gonna send that IDL back to the liver through hepatic lipase, it'll cleave off some more triglycerides. Now we're ending up with a uh, LDL molecule that can get endocytosed, and it'll be mostly cholesterol. It gets delivered to the tissues. Now we take stuff from the tissues to the liver through HDL. If you remember this slide, this will get you 90% of basic test cues. I love studying for test questions. I also like studying for understanding the material. And I, I'm very confident that you guys will do great. Um, I know I didn't cover everything that there is about this topic. I covered the high yield stuff. And why did I do this? It's because this concept is difficult. I'm glad you've stayed with me all this time. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to ask. Um, I'll get back to you as quick as possible. You know, if it's if it's a PhD level question, I might not be able to answer your question fully. However, if it's about the basics of of this material, um, I'd be definitely more than willing to try to answer this uh, to the best of my ability. Uh, also, I enjoy comments. If you enjoyed this video, uh, please like and comment because I always enjoy getting comments. Then also, if you would like more great videos for the future please subscribe. Uh, you know, thank you for giving me your time today. I know this subject is really difficult, but remember, you are awesome. Thanks.